I'm Brendan, I'm a low carb success story from New Zealand and I'm joined today by Dr. Jose Carlos Soto. Welcome along. Could you tell us uh, a little bit about yourself and uh, where you're based in your practice? Sure. Uh, I'm a physician. I live in Brazil. I live and practice in Brazil in the southmost state of Brazil, a city called Porto Alegre. Uh, I'm actually a urologist, but uh, I have been practicing more and more uh, towards treating uh, obesity, diabetes, and me the metabolic syndrome. And how did you get started with, with low carb in the first place? What got you down this path? Well, it was by pure coincidence. I was listening to a podcast and the guy that was being interviewed was Gary Tobbs. Uh, it was 2011. I had never heard of him. Uh, I found it very compelling and I downloaded his book. And once I finished the book, I thought, well, how come I never heard of those studies? Those things have been around for decades and uh, I still thought that uh, fat was bad for you and that you should be eating like 60% carbs. So on the next Monday, I started doing low carb myself. And, and I was amazed by the results in my health. Uh, I was not looking uh, to uh, lose weight, but I actually lost almost 20 kilos. Uh, so uh, indeed I needed to do that. I just was not aware. Uh, and once uh, this happened, once I had this personal experience, I could not stop uh, studying it and going deeper, reading more books, more papers, and I finally started blogging about it. And so taking what you've learned uh, over the course of your own journey, how do you then look to apply low carb in your practice? Well, uh, at first um, I was uncomfortable with uh, applying low carb to my practice because as I said, I am a urologist uh, and uh, a surgeon. But uh, since I started blogging, uh, all of a sudden I had people calling my office asking if I could see them for you know, diabetes or obesity. Uh, and after some thinking about it, I thought if I don't do it, who will? So I started seeing those patients. Uh, and uh, it is so rewarding you know, to actually helping people get better, get healthier, uh, that this uh, is taking more and more uh, of the of my practice i would say like 70 percent of my practice is devoted to uh, this kind of um, um sorry <laughs> it's all right so most of the people you're seeing now you're, you're treating with with this approach and you're seeing some remarkable results i, I imagine what's an example of, of a real patient success story that you've that you've got to share well, I had a patient a uh, couple of months ago that was really remarkable. She was sent to me by a plastic surgeon because uh, she was going to do some aesthetic surgery and the surgeon uh, found out that she was a diabetic and she didn't know it. And her gl glucose levels were in the 400s, uh, so very, very high. Uh, she came to me and I told her, okay, uh, if you went to 99% of doctors, they would give you insulin right now. But uh, if you agree to follow a low carb diet, a strict low carb diet, we can you know, watch what happens with your blood sugars. She bought a, um, I will call it a, I'm sorry, Continuous glucose uh, monitor, CGM. Yeah, yeah CGM. Okay. Stuff uh, she bought a continuous glucose monitor, a CGM, uh, and she would take uh, pictures of the CGM and send me by WhatsApp every day. And in one month, she had normal blood sugars from 400 to normal in one month. I mean, if you tell a endocrinologist that that is endocrinologist that is not familiar with low carb. Uh, he'll tell you this is impossible, but it just happens. And to, to counter that, what are some of the, um, the, the, the barriers or the challenges or the struggles that uh, some people uh, you're, you're dealing with uh, have when adopting low carb? What are some of the challenges that people face? Yeah, uh, I think the biggest challenges are food addiction, uh, especially sugar addiction. 
uh, and uh, the environment, the obesogenic environment, the, the, the toxic food environment, let's put it that way. So uh, imagine that somebody is addicted to cigarettes, but in the world we live, live now, uh, it is hard to smoke because it's forbidden in many places. It's not uh, easy, you, you know, need to go on the rain outside if you want to smoke. Now, imagine how hard it would be for someone to stop smoking if you had it everywhere and it was not only available but incentivized. That's what happens with uh, sugar, with food. So for people with uh, food addiction, and may many people actually, I, I do believe this is a real thing. Uh, I think it, um, it is the most uh, complicated barrier. So how are you finding the, the level of acceptance of, of low carbon, the people you're dealing with? Do you feel that um, it's becoming more widely understood and, and accepted over time? Yes, I think. I think so. Uh, uh, one of the signs that it's becoming more mainstream is that now I see some patients that are doctors themselves uh, and also I have been having some uh, referrals from other doctors including cardiologists that some years ago th this would be impossible. Uh, the fact that the American Diabetes Association has updated their nutritional guidelines to include low carb and as one of the uh, standard approaches helped a lot. And also uh, papers like the recent paper in the New England Journal of Medicine about intermittent fasting uh, has made it more mainstream and acceptable. So uh, I think we've gone a long way in those years, those last years, but uh, we are still uh, moving slowly. But yeah, it's more mainstream now. And how would you say the, the practice of low carb has changed the way you feel about your own work day to day? Oh, it's changed it a lot for the better because, uh, uh, you know, uh, as a urologist, the, the kind of, of population that I usually see are middle-aged men uh, and usually they will come to, you know, check their prostates but they have the metabolic syndrome, they have fatty liver, they have insulin resistance and now I feel that I can help them much more with their health than just by, you know, checking their prostate. So yes, it made my day, my work much more uh, fulfilling. Dr. Soto, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much.